Good morning, my YouTube viewers. It is Crystal here. Uh, you haven't heard from me in the last few days because um, I've been studying for about a week. I was studying electronics because I wanted to make a course with you, Dini, but then I thought about it and I thought maybe it was a bit ambitious for me, uh, but maybe I'll do a course later in the future. Um, those of you who don't know this, I was an electronic technician in the United States Air Force, and so I studied electronics 45 years ago, which meant that I needed to take a little refresher for this course that I wanted to make. And um, so I wanted to turn something positive out of studying for a week and deciding maybe it was a bit ambitious at this moment. So I decided I was going to do a course review and a blog post. And on this particular course review and blog post, it's going to be about Ohm's Law and Watt's Law, because those are the two basic laws in electronics. So I've got Wikipedia up, and um, Ohm's Law states that the current through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the voltage across the two points introducing the constant of proportionality, the resistance, one arrives at the usual mathematical equation that describes this relationship. So I is current equals V, which is, can sometimes be represented as E for voltage over R for resistance. And they give you a little, a little circuit diagram here. So you've got your voltage source, You've got your negative because electrons flow from negative to positive. So you've got your, but that's not right because your voltage actually flows from negative to positive. So that doesn't look right really. But anyway, so you've got your voltage source, you've got your resistor. So, and then you've got your current, even though I don't think that they've done the current correctly. Talks about magnetism and talks about all kinds of stuff. Ohm's Law is made after this guy called George Ohm, and you can read about it in Wikipedia if you want to read about it. I just want to see if they've got the triangle in here. So they give you the circuit analysis. So current equals voltage over resistance or voltage equals current times resistance, or resistance equals voltage over current. And so this is one of the first laws that you'll learn when you study electronics. And so you get, they give you an Ohm's Law wheel, which I'm going to talk about the wheel later on, but this is your wheel, so you can uh, calculate current. It gives you the formulas to calculate current. You can calculate ohms. It gives you the formulas to calculate ohms. And you can calculate volts. It gives you the formulas to calculate volts. And you can also calculate watts, which we haven't discussed yet. And it gives you the current, to the formulas to calculate watts. What is interesting is because I learned electronics in the military, and I don't recall ever being given any formula wheel when I was in the military. So I don't know if this is a new thing or if they just decided not to teach it to us in the military. So the, art, the article goes on. If you're really interested in it, you can read the article. I'm not going to go over the article. And then after we study the Ohm's Law, then what we're going to talk about is Watt's Law. And Watts was named after this guy called Mr. Watts. So again, we've got the formula wheel, which I wanted to show you. And the formula wheel gives you the formulas to calculate current, volts, resistance, and watts. You need to understand that volts is sometimes the V, and volts is sometimes represented by an E in energy. And with uh, Watt's Law, they also give you the triangle, 
which they didn't have the triangle on the Wikipedia article for Ohm's Law, but I'll see if I can find it. So P equals I times E, I equals P over E, and V in E equals P over I. So that's your Watt's Law. It tells you a little bit about Watt's Law. Watt's Law defines the relationship between power, amperage, and voltage drop in an electrical circuit. Watt's Law also states that the power of an electrical circuit is the product of voltage and current. So when I was in the military, we definitely learned Ohm's Law. And we definitely learned power, but I don't think they called it Watt's Law. That's a new thing. The formula for Watt's Law can be given as follows. It gives the relationship between power, watts, current, amps, and voltage, the volt. So power equals voltage times current. Voltage equals power over current. And current equals power over voltage. And then they give you some examples. And you can read the article if you want to read the article. Um, then what we'll do is we'll come over here to some to Google. So here is the little triangle for Ohm's Law, which wasn't in uh, Wikipedia, which it should have been in Wikipedia, in my opinion. But I'm really busy, so I can't actually put it in Wikipedia because I'm busy doing other things. But it should have been in Wikipedia. Voltage equals current times resistance, or resistance equals voltage over current or current equals voltage over resistance and you can see sometimes voltage will be represented by a V and sometimes it will be represented by a E so you need to be aware of that and then they give you some more then give you some more this is your formula wheel which we discussed already and so you need to know about the formula well, so you need to know how to make the formulas. So now that we have discussed uh, Ohm's Law, Watt's Law, and the formula wheel, then what I'm going to do is we're going to go over a code review for, because I really did you know, I really did want to make a course on electronics, and I may actually do that at some time, but it's going to take a really long time for me to do it, and I'm under a lot of pressure. I'm under a lot of pressure to make blog posts and things like that, so maybe sometime in the future I'll make a course in electronics, but I'll, I haven't worked in electronics in 30 years almost. I did electronics when I was in the military so uh, for 15 years. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this Ohm's Law and Watt's Law and we're going to use Python. We're going to use Python to calculate, make these calculations. And we're going to do it in accordance with the formula wheel. So we're going to have, I think, like 12 little blocks of code that we can do with the formula wheel. So the first one is we find voltage uh, E equals the square root of power times R. So you have to import math for that. P is power equals 1000. R is resistance equals 50. And then I created a function because functions are really good. So you can create a function and then you can also create a function library called uh, electronic formulas if you want to, if you want to create a function library called electronic formulas and then you can keep all of these formulas in in your functions library and then so like whenever you're working on a circuit or something like that then you can 
use that library and you don't have to always recreate the formula. So that's something good. I personally have never made a library, but they have this website called PyPy, I believe. And if you want to put your library in PyPy, you can, but I've not done it. But if, if, if that's something that you would like to do, then go ahead and let me know how it worked out. So this is for people working in electronics. I will say that electronics in the elect in computers has really advanced. When I was studying electronics 45 years ago, it was all pencil and paper and a calculator. I don't think we even I don't think we even had a calculator. I think it was pencil and paper and we had to do it all by hand. But now it's become very sophisticated that you have a, a website that's a breadboard, an electronic breadboard, and you can make a circuit on your computer. So you don't even have to have the components that you need. You just get your electronic breadboard that's online and you select the components that you want. You put it on the breadboard and then the breadboard will calculate everything for you. And so that's really fascinating. That's something that wasn't available to me 45 years ago, but I just decided that I really, if I do a course on electronics, really, I just want it to be theory. Um, I'm not gonna get involved with breadboards and things like that, but if you want to, it's available. Uh, breadboards are available for you to do all this neat stuff. If you decide that electronics is the, your way forward, what you want to do, and you don't hear so much about electronics anymore because most people are into computers now. But when I was in the military, you know, you would have these electronics magazines and you could buy electronics magazines which i did i bought electronics magazines to try to improve my skill because i was in the military they just taught you the minimum that they had to teach you so you could do an adequate job and while i've been studying i've realized that they haven't taught me everything that i needed to know to do the job when i was in the military so going back to this uh formula We've created a function called def calc voltage from power, and it's going to take power and resistance as your input. And E, which is your voltage, equals math dot square root P times R, and you return E. E is what it's going to return. So that's, it says print voltage in volts is, and then the, for, and then the function calc volt from power and then the two inputs, P and R, and it gives you the voltage of 223.6 volts. The neat thing about this is, is because I made it into a function, you can take all the functions that I'm giving you and you can put them in a library and you can have your own library that you want to use. But I've never made a library, so I can't tell you how to do it. Maybe at some time I'll make a library and I'll do a video on how to make a library. The next formula we have is find voltage E equals P over I. So P equals 1000 watts. I, that's your current, equals 50 amps. And then we def calc voltage from current and it takes the input P and I. E for voltage equals P over i and p is power i is current e is voltage it returns your voltage and then you print voltage in volts is you call up the function calc voltage from current takes the inputs p and i and it gives you an output of 20 volts the third uh, formula that we have is we find voltage E equals I times R. Now that's your Ohm's law. I equals cur is current equals 10. R is resistance equals 20. 
So def calc voltage from resistance, I and R are your inputs. E for voltage equals I times R, return E. So that's what your function returns. Print voltage in volts is calculate voltage from resistance function I and R gives you an output of 200 volts. And so you can change the values. You can experiment and change the values if you want to. The next one we do is we do find resistance R equals E over I and that's your Ohm's law. So E for voltage equals 220 volts. I for current equals 2 amps. So we do def calculate resistance, calc resistance, and E it takes E and I into inputs. R equals E over I, return R, which is your resistance. Then you print resistance in ohms is calc resistance, takes E and I as your input, and it gives you 110 volts out. So now what we do is we do the find resistance from power, R equals E squared over P. E is your voltage is 220 volts. P is your power equals 1000 volts. So def calc resistance from power E over P. And then R's resistance equals E squared over P and it returns R. Then you, re you print resistance in ohm is calc resistance from power E over P. Resistance in ohms is 48.4. The next uh, function that we have is find resistance from current R equals P over I squared. So P equals, um, is your power, equals 1,000. I is your current, equals 5 amps. And you go def calc resistance from current P, and it takes P and I as your input. So R equals P over I squared. And it returns R, which is your resistance. Then you print resistance in ohms is calc resistance from current P and then I. So your resistance in ohms is 40. Now we define current from power. So I equals square root of P over R. So we have to import math function, import math library from this. P in power is 1,000 watts. R is 250 watts. Sorry, 250 ohms. Then we create our function, def calc current from power. It takes P and R as your input. I equals math dot square root brackets P over R close brackets. And you return I, which is your current. And you print current in amps is, and you call up the function, calc current from power P. And R is your input, and it gives you 2 amps. So that's good. Now, what we have is find current from voltage. I equals P over E. So P is your power as 1,000 watts. E is your voltage is 220 volts. Def calc current from voltage, P and E as your inputs. I equals P over E. And then you return I, which is your current. So you print current in amps. You call it the function, calc current from voltage. And you take your P and your E as your input. And current in amps is 2.4, sorry, 4.55. Now what we do is we find current from resistance, um, I equals E over R, so this is Ohm's law. E is your voltage equals 220 volts, 
R is your resistance and it's 5,000 ohms. We create a function. Def calc current from resistance is E and R is your inputs. I equals E over R being Ohm's law. Return I, which is your current. So you print current in amps is calc current from resistance E comma R and current in amps is 0 0.044, so that's 44 milliamps. Now we find power from voltage, so P equals E times I. So that is your Watt's law. E is your voltage at 220 volts. I is your current at 2 amps. We create a function called calc power from voltage. It takes E and I as your inputs. P equals E times I, and you return P, which is your power. So print power in watts, and then we call up the function, calc power from voltage, which takes E and I as your input, and you come up with 440 watts. Just So now what we're going to do is we're going to find power from current. P equals I squared times R. I, which is Watt's law. I equals 0.2 amps. That's your current. R equals 500 ohms. So we define a function as def calc power from current. I and R are your inputs. P equals I squared times R and then you return P. So print power in watts is calc power from current taking I and R as your input so you've got 20 watts. And then we've got the final formula find power from voltage P equals E squared R over R. Your voltage, which is expressed as E, is 220 volts. Your resistance is 3,000 ohms. And you create a function in def calc power from voltage E uh, over e, to e and R as your inputs. P is power equals E squared over R. And you return P, which is power. You print power and watts is, and you call up the function calc power from voltage E and R, and power in watts is 16.13 watts. So that's it. That covers it for the 12 formulas in the formula wheel, which cover Ohm's law and Watt's law. So what I've done is I've done a code review. I've given you the formulas. I've created functions with all of the 12 formulas in them. So I've showed you how to create a small function, and then I've showed you how to call up, print out that function. So if you want to, you're more than welcome to use this information that I've given you because it's all on the public domain. Ohm's Law and Watt's Law have been around for decades, a long time, long, long, long time. And so uh, you're more than welcome to use that information. If you want to, if you're really into electronics and you want to have a library just with electronics um, formulas and functions, you can create your own library. I personally have never done it. Maybe sometime in the future, I'll create a library just to show you how to create a library and then make a video on that. But I think that there's this website called PyPy. I think it's called PYPI. And I think that you can upload libraries onto PyPy and then they will be freely available on the public domain. I've used PyPy a couple of times with to call up libraries, but I personally prefer to use the libraries that are standard libraries that are always used, like Matplotlib, Seedborn, Pandas, NumPy, 
I'm not crazy about using obscure libraries. But maybe sometime in the future, I will make a library, put it on Pi Pi, just to show you how to do it. So I think that concludes this video. I hope that you got something meaningful out of this code review, and I look forward to making more videos for you in the future. And I also want to thank my subscribers for subscribing to my channel. If you like my videos, please like, subscribe, and share.